Casey Guy 2 here, no nonsense, no how. Today I want to share my experience of uh, diagnosing low fuel pressure and error in my diesel fuel on my 96 Dodge Ram Cummins uh, 12 valve 6BT. Now, I'm not an expert in these, but I think I've, I understand the system pretty well, and then, so I just wanted to show you guys the basics. If you haven't already installed a fuel pressure gauge, I definitely recommend to, or at least uh, you know tap at your banjo bolt and get a fuel pressure gauge uh, to check. Here's my gauge I have set up. Okay, it's an autometer, and the way I have it installed is I got the Torque Tech uh, snubber, snubber banjo ball adapter, and you know pressure sensors mounted right to that. So upon installing this gauge, I noticed I only had 10 psi fuel pressure, no matter what the RPM specification is, 18 to 24 psi at idle, and 26, 20, 26 to 35 PSI at 2000 RPM. So your first step in diagnosing this is, well, first check for obvious fuel leaks or anything like that. Next is very uh, failure prone. This is your, right on the other side of your P7100 pump is your uh, fuel overflow valve. This is what the stock one looks like. And basically what it is, is it has a uh, spring in there with a ball and a, a seat. They're pretty common for the seats and the balls get worn out. And also the spring gets worn out over time, getting hot, cold, hot, cold. So if you, you know, the way to check if this is your problem and not your lift pump or something else is if you follow this steel line back over to the firewall here, it's actually easier to get underneath, but there's uh, a rubber hose where it connects to the other uh, there are lines going back to the tank, the return line to the tank, and you're going to kink that off with a pair of vice grips or hose clamp pliers. And if you see your fuel pressure rise uh, above 40, 50 PSI, then you know it's this valve and, uh, you know, easy fix right there. So when I did that, I had my fuel pressure rise to about 20 PSI. So I said, okay, the valve's definitely bad, but I'm thinking maybe a lift pump too at this case. So I got the Torque Tech adjustable. Uh, one comes with new washers and everything, and I'll put a link in there if you guys want to buy that. So with the new overflow valve, like I said, I'm only getting 20 PSI, so I said, you know what, the stock lift pump is right here. Uh, this thing, I found one on eBay for $69. Here's the, the part number for that, and I'll put, try to put a link in there for that too. I said, you know what, 200,000 miles on this thing, why don't I just put a new one of those on anyway, because that thing's obviously worn out a little bit, or could be the problem, but regardless. So I put a new lift pump in it, I'm not going to go into detail now, that's, you know, mounted down there, you can see the plunger on it, kind of a pain in the butt, you know, it's driven by the camshaft, pushes this plunger in and out, and there's plenty of videos online, um, on, you know, I'm sure on how to replace this. Uh, so after putting that in, now I, I've got my PSI up, uh, I'm, I'm running, you know, up to 35 PSI when I drive around, which is great, and when I kink that line off in the back, it actually goes up to 60 PSI. Okay, so now I have a healthy pump. but more problems. So now with both those components replaced, I'm still having a problem with a very uh, fluctuating needle. Now I understand it's a mechanical pump and some fluctuations normal, but this seems excessive. I'll fire it up for you guys. All right, see, so the needle's kind of jumping all over the place and it seems like after it warms up, it actually drops down to 10 PSI and 10 to 30 and 10 to 30 and all over the place. So I said, and so if I bring the RPM up, uh, see, it's, it's just acting funny is what it is. It's not consistent. So I said, all right, I must be getting air inside of my diesel. So now I want to go into some detail on how to check for that. What you're going to do is uh, roll onto the truck and you got your... Now, I sprayed these down with some rust penetrant, so that's what you see right there, that liquid, because I'm going to be taking those off at some point. But uh, this smaller line here, the bigger line is your fuel supply, the smaller line is your fuel return. You got two stainless braided hoses here, and then they, they go up to two hard lines again, and above that, it goes uh, to the rubber lines I was talking about kinking off. So what you're going to do is take your smaller line right here and use a fuel line disconnect. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't even need one. You squeeze these, these two tabs on this return line up here, push it forward, pop this hose off, have a cup or bucket for some of the diesel, not much comes out, and then take a 7 16 sorry, the camera's screwing up here, uh, take a 7 16 hose, put that on there, and then drop the line into a, a bucket of diesel, or just a bucket, start the thing up. If you see air bubbles coming through that hose, you have a problem with getting air in your system, and I want to try to go into some diagnosing on how to how to fix that. So I haven't actually fixed mine yet, so we will we'll find out what my cause is. All right, so let's talk about where air could be entering the system. 
Anything after the lift pump and these, these high pressure lines or the oil filter, that's all gonna be a fuel leak, not an air leak. Now, so basically anywhere before your lift pump. Uh, so one of the most common places is on the bottom of this, uh, this has a fuel screen in it, and there's actually normally um, a fuel heater in between here. Now I eliminated mine, that's one of the first things I did when I got the truck. Um, here's what that looks like. That is a very common failure. Uh, essentially, it's pretty easy to remove. You just, this goes in between the bottom bowl, and, uh, and then you just reuse the, the banjo bowl on the bottom bowl and take this out of the equation and make sure that O-ring's good on there and you're good. But the way these fail is uh, this electrical connection, it actually looks like mine was starting to fail. They melt in there, and then you get air pulls through here, because this is again on the suction side, you get air into your fuel. Okay, so that's eliminated, eliminated out of the equation. The next most common place I would probably guess is this rubber hose right here. It looks original, and um, you know, again, I reused it, but you got these original spring clamps on there, and so, you know, that could definitely be the case. Uh, so, let's move on down the line here. Alright, so it could be any number one of those, any one of those uh, connections up top there, and then coming down your fuel supply line, again the fat line, could be this connection here, could be a rusted out line, but typically with all of those you're going to see uh, fuel leaking out of them, and when you go to start your truck after sitting for a week or two, it's not going to start right away. This thing always starts immediately, so my air leak is pretty minimal, but enough to bounce the gauge around and get me air in there, and I don't like that. All right, so tracing those lines all the way back, they entered a tank up here, so any pinholes in that or these connections uh, where, where, well, not the return, but the fuel outlet, the bigger of the two lines, uh, bad O-ring in there, that's going to cause air to get in there too. And now, keep in mind also, you could have an internal leak where that, that pipe dips down into the tank if it's rotted out in there. You're not going to see any leaks, you know, externally at all or even see the air leak or anything, and uh, that could definitely be getting, allowing air enter the system. All right, so there's probably a lot of ways to check this, but the way I'm going to try is I have a, a coolant pressure tester right here that goes up to about, you know, 15, 20 PSI. And then I took an old fuel cap here and uh, took the back off, drilled it out, put a hose in it. So I'm going to thread that in and pressurize the tank. All right, so it took quite a bit of pumping to, to get some pressure, but I hear an air leak now, so that's probably going to be my, my vent up top there, I'm thinking. Let's find out here. Yeah, so that's a... Tank vent, so I'm going to cap that off now. All right, so I ended up adding a T in here to fill it with an air hose because this, this pump just, you know, this thing's only got a half tank in it, so it was a little tough filling it up. I filled it up with about 4 PSI. It's been sitting for 15 minutes now. I've checked all my connections up front and underneath. I don't see any liquid at all. Now, that doesn't mean they're not bad because, remember, a vacuum leak and a pressure leak are very different. You might have something pulling vacuum, uh, air through, but you pressurize it with 4 or 5 PSI and, and you got nothing. Uh, do keep in mind, I wouldn't go any much above 5 PSI on this tank because if this tank splits open into old plastic, you know, you, you're going to be in for a... a some hurting. I'm going to uh, demonstrate to you guys what how much air is actually coming in this thing so we have a reference here. So, Alright, so I did what I was telling you before. Hooked the 7 16 clear. Uh, yeah, 7 16 OD, 5 16 ID. Uh, clear hose up to the return line and you can see all those air bubbles coming out of there. So, you know, if you look down here in the uh, fuel oil, you can see all that. So, no good. If you got that going on, again, this truck runs completely fine. Uh, no lack of power, no problem starting. But if you got that going on, you know, it's pumping that back into your tank. The fuel in the, in the tank's getting all aerated. Not good. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take the return, or the uh, inlet side. I'm going to take it off right here. This inlet side, I'm going to drop this into uh, a bucket of drop it into a bucket of diesel and see you know basically to bypass the tank and see if we're still getting these air bubbles why don't you want air in your diesel well look at these high pressure lines coming out over to the injectors if you get diesel that has air in those you know air air can be compressed in those lines and so you're going to be losing pressure liquid can't be compressed so when these things are shooting out their prescribed pressure you know you're getting that that nice diesel spray into the cylinders if you get air in the system you know it's not good for the pump and it's not good for power efficiency all the above so let's try to see if we can square this away all right, so use the 3 8 disconnect tool, get that line off there, and uh, 
hooked. I had a three uh, three eighths aluminum line kicking around. Put that in here. Didn't have to barb it. Got it going over here and into the bucket of diesel. I might have to reprime this system, but I'm gonna fire it up see what it does. All right, so it fired right up and appears to have primed itself, no problem. So got plenty of air still coming through there, but I'm gonna let this thing run. You know, make sure you have your inlet side uh, all the way in the bottom of the bucket. Outlet side doesn't matter. Let this thing run for a few minutes and see if all that air clears out. If all of it does, uh, after running for 10 minutes or whatever the case, all that air is gone, then we know our problem is within the fuel tank and that line going back there. So I'll drop that tank down and see what it is. All right, so after running for a little bit, looks like we still have air in our line um, and our return, our intake line is nice and clear and good. So we're gonna have to go a little further here. Kind of glad I did this before dropping a tank because yeah, I mean, we're still getting air in there. So I think, you know, getting a little frustrated here now, but uh, I think my next step is gonna be replace that, that hose right there that goes in between the, uh, you know, fuel bowl there on the left to the pump, um, or at least replace the clamps, and we'll see what that does. All right, so on all the rubber lines I put new hose clamps on, I don't have new rubber lines right now. I'm gonna have to order those. Seems like it's getting ready to rain now too, so I'm gonna be wrapping this up, but uh, even after putting those new hose clamps on, I'm still getting there on the return line. And then uh, doing a little bit more research, I, I found that you know a bad injector cup seal in inside of one of these injectors could be causing combustion gas gases to be get getting in these uh, fuel return lines on this side. So what I did now is I took that, when they, it comes back over on the back of the head here, <coughs> and then uh, tees into your, your fuel inlet on the fuel filter here. So I took that uh, banjo off. You can see this banjo, I put a hose on that. And for now I plugged this off. The threads on this are eight by one, two, five. So I got a gasket in there. I'm gonna fire this thing up, see if it still, still has air bubbles. Okay, so even with the injector return line out of the equation, still getting little air bubbles. I don't know if you can see those. And you know, I gotta say after bypassing all this stuff and putting the clamps on, I do have a lot steadier fuel pressure, right at 24 PSI. Might even drop that down a hair because that's a little bit on the high side for idle. Um, I have the adjustable regulator, but you know, at, uh, at this point, I'm not sure what the problem is, but it looks like it's ready to downpour and I'm gonna call a day. So uh, yeah, I will check back in when I find out what's going on here. Might have to make this a part two video because uh, I'm gonna have to order these uh, rubber hoses, you know, the, that rubber hose there and the, the two on, I'll probably get them off Larry B's or something like that. And uh, yeah, so I will definitely check back with you guys when I get this narrowed down. But otherwise, these are some of your diagnostic procedures. Hopefully it doesn't take you this long. And you know, um, you <laughs> hopefully you don't have to replace everything like I have and still have air. But you know, sometimes that's how it goes. And uh, anyway, so give me a thumbs up if uh, this helps you out. And uh, definitely comment if you find, you know, something on this helps you and, and you found the issue with yours, you know. Uh, obviously, there's a multitude of things it could be. So, anyway, KZ Guy 2, no nonsense, no how. And I appreciate you guys watching.